Have you been staring at your computer screen trying to write your research papers or working on your introduction and just not knowing what you need to say or how you're going to say it? I remember when I first started working on my papers in graduate school and I would just stare at a blank Word document trying to find what was the best sentence I needed to start off with or what was I supposed to say. And now after writing multiple different papers and completing my degree, I've actually learned the three important components to actually writing a good introduction and being able to write it quickly. And so in this episode today, I just want to share with you what those three key components are to your introduction and give you some examples for how to include them. Before we get started, I do want to let you know that I am hosting a dissertation workshop going on next week. And so if you want to join us in that workshop, you can register at sciencegradschoolcoach.com forward slash dissertation workshop. Or if you're on YouTube, you can click the link that I will have below. And in that workshop, I'm actually going to walk step by step through how to um, really write your, your dissertation and be able to complete your degree. So if you're interested in that, make sure that you go and register. So let's get started into the three important components of your introduction. The first component is going to be why, the second component is what, and the third is how. Now this may seem incredibly simple and like it might not actually be helpful to you, but I'm going to dive deeper into each one of those and explain how that actually structures your introduction. An important part is you want to move sequentially through each of those components. So you want to start with the why, then move into your what, and then finally finish up with the how. So let's get started with the why. So the first thing you should address is why should whoever is reading your paper care about what you're studying? And so in my case, when I was first writing papers, I would always start it off with a statement. Um, so a lot of my research is focused on um, eye mobility and steroid uh, research. And so I would start off with something like steroids are derivatives of cholesterol. That is a fact. It is probably not that important of a fact for the research I was actually doing, but it is kind of an initial how to get into what steroids are. However, that does not help my reader care about my paper or care about what I'm researching. So after writing many papers, I actually learned to start off with why are steroids important? And so instead, I might pivot and say something like, steroids are essential to life, but when they are out of balance, they can have implications in the environment, in your health, and in sports performance. Because that's an important area that, that steroids analysis has been looked into is in those three different areas. So now my, my reader is going to be much more interested in what I have to say because they understand the implications potentially to their own life, but at least to society at large. And so they may be interested in what I'm researching and how I'm going to move that field forward because they understand the importance. Now, I feel like importance is often focused on a medical perspective. And so how are we helping people medically? And in my, you know, introduction sentence, I have that. I have it affects your health. But just because you aren't focusing or your research is not on something that is medical doesn't mean that you don't need to still express the why. And so in the case, if you were, let's say, researching the synthesis of a material that is important in the conversion of, you know, solar energy into electricity. So if you're researching that, that still has really high impact in society because it could be really important for something like making solar panels or renewable energy. And so you can say, you know, maybe you're making it at a, at a cheaper cost or a higher efficiency. And so you can say, you know, this type of material is really important in the progression of renewable energies because it allows for solar panels to be made at a low cost. 
And so now somebody who is reading your paper now understands, okay, I understand why they're researching this because they want to help renewable energies become even, you know, more broad or, or allow more people to have access to renewable energies. So if you have something like that where it's not a medical reason, but it's still something impacting society, then, then you need to explain what that impact is. Now, if you have something that is not going to impact society, really, and you're just researching something to gain knowledge in a specific area, you still need a why that this is important to, to care about, to research, you know, why should we fund this? So in this case, you want to do something that creates mystery. And is so one of the um, aspects to my papers is that we look at how metals affect molecular structure, specifically gas phase structure. And so if I want to pitch this and we're not talking about how it in increases the ability to analyze things or anything like that, but I'm just looking at how the metal affects the gas phase structure, I can pitch this and say, we know that metals and molecules interact every day or multiple times in a second or all the time. However, we st still do not understand how these interactions can change the structure of different molecules. And so now I've created mystery in that maybe somebody, you know, kind of wants to understand why that that's going to happen. It's similar to any fictional story. Yeah, that fictional story is not going to... Um, impact people's lives. So take like Lord of the Rings, right? Whether Frodo gets the ring and destroys it in, Mor in Mordor doesn't actually impact anyone's life. However, it creates the mystery where we want to know the information. We want to know, does that happen? And so it's very similar to that where you want to create the mystery so that people want to know that information. And so once you've covered the why, why should your reader care about what you're studying, you should move into the what, which is basically what are you studying? So in the what, we want to give the reader the essential information they're going to need to actually understand what your research is and what you're researching. So if we go back to my example of steroids and eye mobility, I now need to tell my reader what steroids are, what their functions are, and what eye mobility is and how it works. So that once my reader gets into my results, they're not sitting here not able to understand my results because they literally don't even understand what steroids are or they don't understand what eye mobility is. And so I'm going to provide that essential information up front so that my reader is now capable of understanding everything I'm going to tell them afterwards. Now, after reading a lot of different introductions, what something that I have found is that a lot of people put way too much what into their introduction. And so they create a very disjointed, just encyclopedia background knowledge filled introduction where someone is, it's one, just kind of exhausting to read because it's just all this information being thrown at you with no context and you're not really sure why you're interested in it. And one of the reasons that research papers are often so hard to read. I think that one of the main reasons that this happens is because the writer is focused on the paper being um, a way to show that they are actually an expert in their field. And so they feel like they need to tell the reader everything they know about this topic so that the reader will not question if they are actually an expert in this field or if they actually know what they're talking about. And so we actually need to transition that thinking instead of the writing a paper being all about us and us having proof that we've done something and that we're important and that we know what we're talking about. We want it to be more about the reader. And so how do we communicate to the reader what we're doing in a way that they're going to be able to understand and actually maybe get excited about the research that we're doing. And so when we transition to from us to our reader, we're going to create a much better paper because it's going to be reader focused. And so in this case, in my example, when I talk about steroids and eye mobility, 
Something I don't do is dive into the intricacies of what the different types of eye mobility are and what they can do and what they can't do and how they differ from each other because that's not helping my reader to understand the research that I performed or what I was doing in my research. That's just me spouting out all the knowledge I know. Now I know those different intricacies and if I was in an oral exam or if I was in a presentation and someone asked me about how they differed, could I tell them yes, but I don't need my paper to show that I know everything. So instead, I want to only focus on that information that's actually helping my reader to understand what I'm doing later on. So that way it's not so disjointed and just all this information getting thrown out at you. So once the reader has a good idea of why what we're studying is important and what we are studying, we now want to go into the how. So in the how, we're actually answering two different questions. We want to answer how have others studied this before and how are we going to study it in this paper? And so in the first question, we are focused on what previous literature has done. And so if we think about it, what are the couple of studies that have led to what we are doing? Or once we found that we got a certain result, what was an important study for us understanding that result? Something that I see a lot of people do, um, or at least way too many papers do, is that whenever they try and go into their how section, they go, in X year, Y person discovered Z. So in my example, I could say in some year, um, this person discovered that there were steroids. And first of all, just no one, no one cares. That's the sentence that we put in when we don't know what we want to say next and we don't, we don't know what we're going to say. So we're just going to start from the very beginning. But that's a good sentence to have in an encyclopedia, maybe in a book chapter, but it's not a good sentence to have in your introduction because you want to be constantly getting the reader to read the next thing you're going to say and to actually get into your research. And so instead, we want to set them up and move from how or move from what something is. So in my case, if I was talking about what eye mobility is and what steroids is, and now I want to tell them how have eye mobility and steroids been studied in the past. What I did in a lot of my papers is I discussed three really important papers to the beginning of my study. And so I would discuss this one paper that looked at ion mobility of steroids and found that natively separating out steroids really wasn't good. And so they applied something called derivatization. So they put a molecule onto a steroid um, and, and linked them together. And then they found that this actually increased the separation between steroids. Now that has some um, disadvantages having derivatizing your molecule, you have to have really good um, conversion of the original molecule into the derivatized molecule to actually have repeatability in your measurement. And so there's disadvantages there. And so then I go into another paper that looked at, they introduced metals. And so in the gas phase, you can um, adduct a metal to a steroid. And so what they found in that paper is that you can actually adduct multiple steroids to the same metal. And in that case, they actually found really good separation between um, one type of steroid isomers. And then I go into a third paper that was done by the same authors as the second paper, where they took that one metal and then used it on multiple different steroid isomer pairs and saw that, hey, they were consistently getting decent separation between those um, isomers using this new technique. And so now that I've covered that, now that my reader has read that, it kind of tells them the story of how we're moving into the research that I'm going to perform, which is broadening out the different types of metals being used. And so now my, my reader has a context for how other people have studied it, and that's going to allow them to understand what I'm actually doing in the field instead of just simply telling them what is going on and then telling them how I'm going to study it. They don't really understand, well, has this already been done before? 
Um, how have other people, you know, kind of studied it? Why is yours adva advantageous versus, you know, other things like derivatization in my case? And so you want to give them this information so that they can understand how have things been happening previous to you. And then you're going to move into how are you going to study it in this paper? And so this is really giving the reader a synopsis of what you're actually going to cover in your paper. And, and the best way to transition to this is to say how you're moving the field forward. So in my case, I would say to further this work, we examined multiple different steroid isomers with multiple different metals and or all of the group one metals to understand what metal actually works best or do all of them work. And then from this, we were able to find that different metals work best for different steroids. And so steroids should be optimized. And so it's just teasing my reader to understand what I'm going to cover and kind of get excited and under and want to read further, want to understand the intricacies of what I did and what we actually found and what metal works best for what steroid. And so we're constantly leading the reader further and further so that once they finish my introduction, they know why they should keep reading and why it's important. They can actually understand what they're going to keep reading because they understand the basics of what I'm going to explain in my research and they also understand the context how has it been done before and they have a little taste in their mouth for what they're going to end up reading so this week i want you to think about the paper that you're working on right now what component do you need to work on more in that introduction do you need to work on the why the what or the how and if you're on YouTube, leave um, me a comment down below explaining what was your takeaway? What did you, which part of that did, were you not thinking about before and you think is going to actually help your papers become better because now you're going to be able to write in, you know, maybe you're missing the why and you're just diving into all of your background knowledge or maybe you have too much background knowledge. So kind of give me um, what you thought your, your biggest takeaway was from that. And if you're interested in going even deeper into learning step-by-step step how to complete your dissertation and to do it with less stress and frustration and less wasted time, I urge you to join me in my workshop next week covering um, writing a dissertation from a science or social science background. And if you want to join me, um, go ahead and register for it at sciencegradschoolcoach.com slash dissertation workshop or click the link below. And if you're not able to make the time that it's at, um, go ahead and register and you will re receive the recording of um, that workshop so that you would be able to watch it on your own time. But I do encourage if you are able to come live, there will be a live Q&A session at the end. Um, so if you are able to come live, um, I'd love to be able to meet you and interact with you um, at the end if you have questions for me. And so I hope that you guys have a great and productive rest of your week, and I will see you guys on the next episode.